Hey guys, it's Snowdrama here, and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial for System Serializable and the JSON utility that's packed in with Unity. But before we get started, I did want to put out one little disclaimer. I am not a Unity expert, and this may not be always the best practices, but uh, this is more of a hands-on, get down and dirty with Unity kind of tutorial for people who may not know uh, a lot about Unity or just want to get into this kind of thing in their current project. Maybe they're a hobbyist or something like that. This is kind of more of a, hey, did you know you could use uh, the JSON utility and the system serializable like this? That also being said, let us get right down and dirty with the code. So we have a scene here. I have a, a scene already set up called game just so I can save. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Unity and how it does loading. Unity has a, uh, a resource loader built into it. Uh, and that resource loader is... Um, goes to the resources folder when you create a new project it's not set up so you, we will have to create a resources folder so let's create that now now that we've created our resources folder any of the files that we want to load using the built-in uh, asset loader will go into the resources folder so now we're going to create uh, what we're going to call the json utility or uh, sorry the json file reader class that will use uh, the resource loader to load JSON files from the resources folder. So let's start here and create a new uh, C Sharp script, and this is going to be called JSON File Reader. And then we will open that file up in Sublime Text, which ended up over here. Let us open that up in our text editor. I'm using Sublime Text. You can use any text editor you want if you want to use Mono Develop. It's very similar. It's almost exactly identical to this. So don't worry about what editor you, you're using. Uh, but if you'd like to know what I'm using, I'm using Sublime Text because I also use it at work. Since JSON File Reader is going to be a utility class, we don't actually need any of the Unity boilerplate, the start and update function. We don't need any of that. So we're actually going to start by just getting rid of that extra stuff that you, you don't need to know about. And we're going to uh, add our own functions to it. So the first thing we're going to do is create a static function. So public static string, because it's going to return a string. And we're going to call this uh, load JSON as resource, which will take a string which is the path to that file. So inside the resources folder, we're gonna put our JSON files. So that will be what this path is, any file inside the resources folder. We're going to create something called a text asset. And this is any text object, right? It could be a TXT file, it could be a JSON file. Any text object is a text asset. We're going to create something called a text asset. And this is any text object, right? It could be a TXT file, it could be a JSON file. Any text object is a text asset. So we will create a new text asset in here. And we're gonna call it loaded JSON file. And this is going to be, this is where we actually load from the resources folder. So resources dot load. And we're going to use these caret brackets here. These caret brackets, brackets basically just denote a type. Um, so in this case, we're saying that we're loading a text asset because we know what it is. And then we're going to, in the parentheses, as because load is a method, uh, we're going to be using the path. Now, one of the things that uh, happens with Unity is that the path for the resource loader is actually the name of the resource without the extension. For example, if we had a, uh, a JSON file called weapon.json, we would just have it in the path as uh, weapon, like this. But we're going to actually pass them in here as a .json, as the, the resource itself being a .json. 
So we're going to have to remove that dot JSON. So we're going to do string uh, JSON file path. And what this is going to do is this is just going to basically take the path and do a replace. And we're going to take dot JSON and turn it into nothing. That's all it is. We take the path and we replace the dot JSON with nothing. It just finds the dot JSON, removes it from the string, and that becomes our JSON file path. And we will use that to find our text asset. This two lines right here is probably the most important two lines in this. All it's doing is we're sending it a file name. We're sending it a specific file we want to load. It's loading it in as a text asset and storing it here. Now, all we need to do is return that text asset. So we say return loaded JSON file dot text. And that's the text out of the text file because the, the text asset has a lot more information to it, but we just want the text. That's all we want. We want a string of text. That's all of the contents of that file. So that's what this is. All we do is return the text. So now we're going to be loading in a text file into this. In this case, we're talking about Unity, so we're talking about games. In this case, I'm going to, as an example, create a weapon, and it's going to be called a wooden sword, and we're going to load that wooden sword in as an item. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to Unity, we're going to create a new c -sharp script, and that c -sharp script is going to be called item. Simply put, it's an item, right? So let's open this up, and just like our JSON file reader, we're actually not going to need any of the boilerplate. The reason for this is that an item isn't actually a game object. It is a, uh, a container for some information that we're storing in a text file. So we don't want any of this game object boilerplate. We actually just want it to be a public class item. Now what we'll do is we'll make that system serializable. We're making this system serializable because what, what this basically says is that we can do something, we can serialize the item, meaning we can take it and crush it down to its most raw form, AKA the values of all of the variables, right? We can serialize it into a one package and put it somewhere. Uh, in this case, we're serializing it into a human readable format, which is JSON. We're going to uh, define in the item here, we're going to create some public variables that we're going to be able to access inside the item. So in this case, it'll be the public uh, item uh, string item name, public string item description, SC, so we'll say just item DESC, public int item ID. Um, let's see, what else should this item have? Public int gold value. And then we'll also have a public float uh, power. We're not going to call it strength and for a specific reason that we'll get into to a certain. It, to later. Um, so for now, that's all we need. We'll just say it's an item name, the description. So this will be our wooden sword. The description will be um, flimsy wooden sword. The item ID will be zero because it's the first item in our game. The gold value will be 10 gold. And then the power of the item will be uh, one. That's the that's the the power of this sword. And it can be any these can be any number you want. These can be any item or description you want. But for now, this is what we're going with. So uh, this is just the, uh, the so now that we have a serializable item class, now we need to be able to load these items into the game. So we'll come back to here. And we're going to create a new C sharp script. And that C sharp script is going to be called item loader. And we will open the item loader up. Now, 
One thing is, this actually is going to be a game object, because we're going to put it on a game object in our game, and use the awake function to load everything into the game. So, void awake. And this, uh, if you didn't know, uh, the boilerplate starts with start and update, and for general purpose, start and update are uh, are useful. But in this case, I want to use awake because I want to make sure that awake, because uh, awake happens um, before start happens. Um, I might actually be wrong there. Okay, so I wasn't dumb. Uh, yes, awake is called before, so this is where we assign our values and then we can use them in start and update. We're not going to be using them today, but um, that would be where we would put our using of the items. Awake, just make sure this gets initialized before anything tries to access it. As long as we access it in start or update, we're, we're okay. Awake always gets called before start and will only ever be called once during the lifetime of that game object. So, what are we gonna do in awake? We're going to actually load this item. So, uh, so let's just say we have a item here. So we're gonna say public item. And this was uh, an interesting thing. Uh, so the main reason I did this tutorial is because I saw some people talking about how they had just found out about System Serializable and how cool it was. Um, so we ha we're gonna create a item, my item in this item loader class. Save it, we'll go back to Unity real quick. And so right off the bat, what System Serializable can do for you uh, so let me load this in. So now you can see that I've uh, I've added the item loader component to my game object here. What this basically allows me to do is it allows me to see, you can see that I have a name, description, ID, gold value, and power listed here right in my, uh, right in my script, right? So a serializable component like this would actually be able to show all of its values in the editor, which is also a huge benefit to this. And that's what they were talking about in the video that I was looking at, uh, that they were talking about system serializable, but I wanted to go one step further and add some new functionality to uh, your repertoire of, uh, of Use, use cases for that. So now we can see that the item shows up. So we're gonna want to load something into that item. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to, on awake, we're going to get a string called load my item. So we're gonna load the text from a, an item uh, JSON file into this string. So this will equal our JSON file reader dot load json as resource and we will give it a path of uh items say weapons uh wooden sword dot json so that's that's what we want we want to load items weapons wooden sword dot json as a resource into load my item or uh, lo yeah it should be it should be my loaded item so next up on our list here when i jason i misspelled json file reader there we go so now that we have our static function in json file reader here uh, called in this, it will automatically load this, and we can determine that by saying debug dot log my loaded item. So, but before we do that, we're gonna have to create this. So let's go to our resources folder here, create a folder called items. Inside that, create a folder called weapons. And inside this, we will create a text document. So I'm actually gonna do that over here because it's kind of a pain in the Unity editor to create like regular text assets. So we're gonna create a new file here called weapon, uh, wooden sword.json. And inside our wooden sword.json, we just have a blank file. So inside our wooden sword.json, we could 
uh, we, we want it to match all of the items in here. And so Unity has this uh, JSON utility, which will actually map our variable names to values inside our JSON file. We can take item name here and we'll say uh, item name is wooden sword. There we go. Item name wooden sword. So it now has wooden sword as an item name. So when I read in this file, it will store wooden sword to the item name variable. So let's go through this real quick and add the rest of these. Add commas after every one. So the item description is going to be a flimsy wooden sword. The uh, item ID. is going to be zero. The gold value we said was going to be 10. And then the power is going to be 1.0 because it is a float. So uh, we know that the power is a float, so we're going to set it to 1.0. And that maps everything we've got here. Wooden sword, flimsy, okay? So that's all the things. So in theory, everything's all set. Our item loader will go use our JSON file reader to load items, weapons, wooden sword.json as a resource, store it in my loaded item, and then log my loaded item. So let's see what happens. Now that we've got our, our things here, we will say, boom. And there it is down here in our console. It may be a little hard to see, but down here, right in this text field, it's gonna say item name, item description, item ID, gold value, and power. So all of our, our actual JSON string is actually being loaded in and stored to that variable. So that's great. That's exactly what we want it to do. So now we want to store that into our my item variable inside that. If you notice, I'll, look, I'll run this again, you notice it doesn't actually store the values. So first we gotta do that. So let's come back here and underneath our debug log, we can actually get rid of the debug log now because we won't need it anymore. And now we're gonna say my item is equal to, and now we're going to use the JSON utility. So JSON utility, from JSON and it takes a string of JSON which is my loaded item. Now what we do have to do before we can do this because it will throw an error is we have to define what type uh, we're going to be parsing into in the right here in these uh, these carrots here and it's going to be a item type. So from JSON item my loaded item. That string right there will take your text your JSON text parse it as an item into my item. And now when we go back to Unity here and run it again, we'll see that it loads all of our values into our item loader script. And there it is. Wooden sword, a flimsy wooden sword, item ID zero, gold value 10, and a power of one. So now, obviously, now we can load a single item into, uh, as, a, as a text document, as a JSON file, into our game, into a structure an actual class that we can then use to do things in our in our game so that's where i'm going to call it for now we'll do multiple items in the next video we'll, uh, talk about loading in uh, a list of items uh, and having multiple different items and storing those items so that we can use them in the next video so thank you for watching if you did learn something please leave a like and uh let me know in the comments what you're going to be using uh this for if you're going to use it in your game um subscribe if you haven't already done that and uh yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys later peace out